Hey everyone, and uh, welcome again to today's uh, daily workout. Um, I'm Gordon Webb, I'm the Director of Growth at Firefish. Um, this is the, the big Firefish takeover week. Um, so if you joined myself and Campbell yesterday, hopefully you got a bit of insights into who we are, what we do, and we shared some really good kind of insights in terms of the actual market, in terms of what we're seeing right now as well. But today I'm joined by Joanne. <coughs> Joanne Hi, is Joanne's one of our senior sales execs. Um, and today we're going to be talking about everything kind of business development. Um, so obviously the recruitment side, people tend to think sometimes about obviously just placing candidates, which is obviously key to that role. Um, but on the other side, you do need to continue to bring in new clients, find new requirements as well. So business development plays a big part in that role. So we're just going to be looking at some of the kind of key strategies today um, that you should be deploying in order to, to maximize your business development side of things. So, Joanne, <laughs> I'm going to be throwing some questions at you just in terms of um, the, the business development side. So That's all right. probably deal with the, the, the main one, first of all, which is the old, the old phone that some people are scared of <laughs> um, and cold calling. Is that is that something that, that, that you do? Is that something recruiters should be doing in terms of cold calling? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely always a popular discussion, isn't it? It doesn't go to fashion. Some will say cold calling is dead, yet you've got others who just still continue to build their sales metrics kind of around it and still find cold calling to be highly effective. I mean, personally, I found a more blended approach to sales definitely works best for me, and I know others have found great success in that. I mean, your business development strategy will always involve picking up the phone to call prospects. I don't think that's ever going to go anywhere, yeah. but it's the steps that you're taking kind of beforehand, warming up those calls that can really make the difference. Cold calling someone, you're kind of like, you're, you're catching them off guard, you're putting them on the spot. And in short, you're having to work really, really quickly to get a hook in and turn the conversation around in your favor. So it's, yeah. you're just kind of, going off in the back foot at the start, aren't you? If you take a slightly warmer approach to it, then the prospect has at least a vague idea of who you are and who your company are. And you can do that in a number of ways as well that are just really, really simple things to do. Interact with them online, connect with your prospects on kind of like LinkedIn, send introduction emails, write blog posts, do content marketing, it doesn't mean that you're then going to replace your 100 calls a day from the old school metrics to 100 emails or whatever your metrics can be. Just pick your audience and build up, build up and add that value. So, yeah, I definitely think picking up the phone and recruitment is still highly important, but there's just slightly different ways of, of doing it now, I think, that, that can help and make a difference. Definitely. I think <laughs> the, phone, the phone's never going to be dead. Um, yeah. I seen a stat yesterday from, from a good pal, Dougie, over at, um, at Source Wheel. Um, and they were saying, obviously, they do a lot of email sequencing and stuff, but they were saying that 60, 66% of all meetings last month were actually booked on the phone. Yeah, so, okay. obviously, all those emails and everything, exactly what you just said, it helps warm them up. Um, but definitely getting on the phone to actually get those dates in the diary and book in calls is, is definitely the way to go. So It um, leads I'll, to better conversations as well, doesn't it? They're yeah. warmer, they're longer, they're better quality. Yeah, definitely. So, so yeah. So, guys, make sure you're on the phone. Don't be, don't be scared of it. <laughs> people like, to, <laughs> people like to talk. To quote an old, an old yes. one from, from before. So, and on that vein as well. Then, so obviously, getting on the phone. I mean, I've been around a long time. We used to have call stats to 100 minutes, 60 calls a day, all this type of stuff. So, should people be kind of concentrating on kind of quant quantity? Um, of calls, just banging through those calls, or should they really be focusing in on the quality of the calls? Is it better to make a, a lesser number of calls? Um, I mean, or, yeah, it's a really good follow-up question to the cold call, and especially since leading into the, the quality. But ultimately, neither is really better than the other. Both terms will, will hold their place, depending on your strategy and, and like your sales goal. So quality will be important for conversions. So we know if we have better quality calls, it results in better conversations, build relationships, you're having less calls, and you'll have a higher conversion. So quality will equal conversion. In an ideal world, that sounds great. Yeah. But playing kind of devil's advocate, you do need a quantity at a certain point as well to ensure your, things like your sales and your marketing campaigns will be working and succeeding. So while quality is good for conversions, quantity, if it's used correctly, does have the potential to increase things like your brand awareness. So it's really just important to know what part of the process to apply each of those. Yeah. 
definitely. I've always said that you create your own luck. <clears throat> um, if you're sitting there waiting on something to happen, it just doesn't happen. But yeah. as soon as you start picking up that phone and making calls, it might not happen that day. It might not even be the same week. But then those that effort that you've put in then starts to come through. And all of a sudden, that's when you find yourself that you're busy because the effort that you put in, as soon as you stop that, then that's when you find yourself, you're just sitting there and you're sitting waiting on something to happen. Oh, definitely. And it, it just doesn't happen. So you've definitely got to go and create your own luck. So I completely agree. Yeah. Quantity. And when they start to drop into your pipeline, those little nuggets over time, it makes yeah. a massive difference. <laughs> it certainly does. It certainly does. So definitely quality, quality over quantity, but definitely the quantity helps. Um, and like I say, some of those calls that you're making now that you might not feel you're getting anywhere will definitely help come back you and help you. Shine. Um, so in terms of switching it a little bit then, so <clears throat> obviously you've got the picking up the phone, speaking to people, but we've also got social media, we've got online. Yeah. And there's obviously a lot of companies out there building their brand and sharing content, doing things. But from a from an individual's point of view, if you're not running your own business and you're a recruiter mm -hmm. uh, working for a company, personal brand equally as important as as the obviously the business that you're working for and what they're doing in the market. Oh, yeah. So like employer brand kind of is personal brand type thing. Yeah, exactly. I really like this subject, actually. I feel like it's something that has just grown massively over the last few years. Individuals who've kind of really stepped up and pushed themselves and grown to become like industry leaders, experts and kind of go to contact within their niche, which I think is really important. So, yeah, I mean, the quick answer to why is it important to build a personal brand? People are more likely to interact with people before they interact with a company. So if you think of LinkedIn, for instance, great example, everyone loves it in recruitment. Mm -hmm. yeah. You connect with people, human to human relationships are built. Company pages still exist and hold a place. But how many of us decline those follow my company invites on LinkedIn? You, you just don't interact with those pages the same. And if you share something on your personal feed, it will gain more impressions and a higher engagement than the same post shared onto like, your company LinkedIn page. Yep. I think some company owners previously got quite weary of it with people building their personal brand. and But in turn, it will grow your brand as well and that will become recognisable off the back of your own brand. So yeah, why is it important to build a personal brand? You're giving yourself a competitive advantage. People will remember you. Just stay authentic, I'd say. Provide value and purpose. And if you're sharing the right content, getting involved in the right discussions within your network and build up that credibility, you'll benefit from referrals, inbound leads, warmer conversations with potential prospects. And the company brand will then come as, as a part of that as well, whether it's your own company or someone else's. Definitely. There's certainly there's lots of people in my network, and there's there's some better than others. There's some people just share content for content's sake. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but there's but there's plenty of people out there that when I know I see a post from them, that it's going to be something that I'm probably whether it's video content, written content, I'm probably going to engage with it, even though it's not came from a big brand. It's came from an individual person that might be working for another company, but I just know that the type of stuff that they share. But so I think again, going back to the kind of quantity over quality stuff. Yep, don't yeah. share too much because obviously there's all the algorithms and LinkedIn as well in terms of mm -hmm. the number of posts you're putting on there. So be selective, but definitely building that personal brand will, will make you stand out from the crowd when you're when you're trying to target those clients that you're looking for as well. Yeah, trying to be visible online definitely doesn't mean go and spray on every one of your clients or potential prospects, comments as well, emojis and everything all over the place. It's it's more content and get involved in high value discussions, add something credible to the conversation. And yeah, it will just start to circle back to you, just like like the quality and quantity subject, yeah. won't it? Excellent. And we all know it's hard work going out there and trying to find new clients. Um, but <laughs> yeah. leveraging, leveraging your your existing client base in terms of people that you've put the hard work in to then go and find. So in terms of getting referrals and things from existing customers, what, what's the best ways to kind of, those success stories that you've had, what's the best ways to kind of share those success stories to other than try and, gain more business without having to sit and bang the phone yeah i mean you've there's never a really nice medium for that some people don't share anything and some people share too much what i would say is just don't be scared to share about your success but remember to back it up with proof prospects will hear the same pitches the same shouts week in and week out from how incredible you and your agency are but let you can let your success kind of speak for itself as soon as you've worked with a client you've 
done a great job for them, especially if it's been difficult, ask them for a testimonial. There's yeah. nothing unordinary about that. Video testimonials are highly effective, but you could start with building up your recommendation section on LinkedIn, make your success visible. So when prospects go on to things like your profile and land on your page, they're going to see them at the bottom there and you can extract them and use them in your business development emails and things like that. Nice and basic, have a testimonial section on your website. Make it visible. More creative ways you could do it is invite clients onto Crowdcasts or podcasts, allow them to share their experience. If they're hiring at that time, it's a good way for them to plug their own company and shine a light on themselves in return. It's a bit of a win-win. Or if your agency blogs, invite them to do guest blogs, features for your websites. These are good if you work in a niche as well, because your client can share what they're doing in the industry and it's going to help them as well in return. So there's a number of different ways that you can shout about your success and then kind of get your clients back up for you as well. And I think sharing your success stories with any kind of other industry partners that you're working with as well, there's a whole there's a whole network of people out there that, yes, you've got your clients who are obviously using you guys and you're helping place people but there's a whole other network of people out there that you can leverage as well so it's building yeah. those relationships making sure that they're understanding what you guys are doing how you're different and sharing those success stories with them as well but i definitely think the video videos i'm just <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a big reader of content so i think that those those video testimonials done properly um can really help kind of demonstrate that success and where you've really helped that client and getting in and with them and working with them so that's it and you can be used them time and time again these things are yeah they're, they're highly beneficial excellent excellent well i think on that note guys i think hopefully that's some some top tips there from joanne in terms of you guys so i think take away from that quanti quantity over uh, quality sorry over quantity not that we read <laughs> but definitely don't be scared of those phones go and pick those phones up Build your personal brand, get it out there, get yourself out there, get yourself on LinkedIn, make sure that you're, you're speaking to the right people and sharing the right content. And then make sure that when you're putting all that hard work in, you're getting the success, that make sure you're sharing that through every channel and especially through your, your, your direct customers that you're already working with. They're your, mm -hmm. your biggest advocate or evangelist that are, that are out there that are going to be shouting about you guys in terms of the work that you've done for them. So. Thanks very much, Joanne. Great to have you on the session. Hope you guys will get some benefit from that. And then tomorrow, um, Campbell, who was with me yesterday, Campbell's going to be back tomorrow with Kai Murray, um, our non-exec director. Um, Kai is the ex-CEO uh, of Search Consultancy, took them from 40 million to 120 million. And Kai is going to be sharing with you the six steps to grow in your business. There's still the six ways to grow your business. How she's going to do that in 15 minutes, I have no idea, but she is. <laughs> so make sure you're on here tomorrow and we catch up with Campbell and Kai um, tomorrow about the six steps to grow in your business. So thanks very much, everyone. Really good to speak to you all this morning again. And thanks, Joanne. Thanks for having soon. me. No problem. Cheers. Thanks very much, guys. See you all later. See you.